First off, shout out to my guy Dimitri for hooking me up with this Bateman jersey, the number seven too. And yeah, you know, the little authentic kind because they do all the sleeves like that. Now, uh, when I'm going to be able to fit in this Bateman jersey, uh, it's gonna be a little bit. We working though. We work, we on the way. We working. So, I got you soon. But anyway, um, let's get into this episode of questions from subs. Why are you shocked? First question came from my boy Julius B. He said, here we go again. Okay, yes, I was just upset as everyone else when we all found out that Lamar wasn't in the top 10. The hypocrisy. First, you say he deserves the same, if not a higher paid contract than Desha Deshaun Watson. Mega Burger with all these cheese guaranteed contract. LOL. But thinking, but yet he's not in the ranks with him. Shaking my head. I, I can't do it. That's not the why are you shocked, though. It's about Eric DaCosta not being ranked as a top 10 GM. Yo, of course he's not. Uh, my biggest concerns are Eric DaCosta in the front office and how they pay players, but that's above my understanding. I might be wrong, but engraving if Lamar didn't come along, John Harbaugh would be gone. Imagine they don't let Lamar play in 2018 and John decides to keep Joe on the field. I love Joe, but one more losing season, Joe and, and John are gone. Yes, you are 1,000, 2,000 percent correct. Ed is getting ready to be a clean house if it wasn't for Lamar. Anyway, uh, Marty maybe gets the job and lets Lamar start fresh in 2019. I will. I don't even know if they were hired. They would have had hired Marty. I don't think they would have hired Marty as a uh, the head coach because Harbaugh hired Marty, and I don't think that the Ravens would have been like, "Oh, we're gonna keep somebody who Harbaugh brought on to be our next head coach." I just. I couldn't see them doing that. I think if they would have started over, they would have started like over, over. But we'll never know. Anyway, uh, he said Marty maybe gets the job unless Lamar start fresh in 2019 with Marty as a head coach and Greg Roman as the OC. Marty didn't do so badly with the Eagles and Jalen Hurts, hypothetically, all of it. Uh, I, I say it to say that Lamar was Ozzy's last draft pick uh, as GM. Well, no, he wasn't. He, he was his... Last first round pick, but not his last pick. But he was in the last draft class. But anyway, uh, now tell me what has Eric DaCosta done? Exactly. So, of course, he's not in the top 10. Not saying that he won't be in the future, but he's no guru either. So don't be shocked. Oh, oh okay. He put that little twist on it. Ah, okay. Ah, mm. Wow, okay, you, you you threw me for a loop. I thought you were going one way, but you were going a whole nother direction. Um, I love the argument. I, I love when, when people are arguing. And when they don't know exactly what to say off the top of their head in order to rebuttal or reply to an argument, they say, hey, well, can, can you name me? Can you name me 10 better GMs? Can you name me 10 better GMs? Whenever it's a top 10 argument, they always, that's what they always say. Can you name me 10 better? But that, that, that's what I thought of because I didn't even know how to respond to this at first because it threw me for a loop. Because, again, I, I thought that he was talking about something completely different. Eric DaCosta, uh, should he be in the top 10 of general managers? Well, um, I think you got to think about responsibility. And the reason I say responsibility is because... Did Eric DaCosta draft this team that he has right now? Some of it. Some, yeah. Some, no. Um, but the, the, the heaviest of the heavy hitters on this team, did he draft them? Or Lamar Jackson? No, he didn't draft them. Marlon Humphrey? No, he didn't draft them. Ronnie Stanley? No, he didn't draft them. Pat Ricard? No, he didn't draft them. Mark Andrews? No, he didn't draft him. Gus Edwards, no, well, he wasn't even drafted. But then you think about it. Wait a minute. Who are some other heavy hitters on this team? Um, Calais Campbell, Marcus Peters. Uh, he just signed Marcus Williams, brought over brand, or drafted Brandon Stevens. Um, Devin Duvernay was his draft pick. Rashad Bateman. Um, and we don't even, J.K. Dobbins, we don't even need to go down a whole list. 
but uh, I did say responsibility. Um, so in order for you to continue to have success with something that you've been handed and in part you've constructed yourself, you have to be responsible. Ozzie Newsom, in his last draft, he set the Ravens and Eric DaCosta up nice. Really nice. Um, and for the most part, there have been some areas where it's been like, uh, but for the most part, Eric DaCosta has been very responsible in assembling this roster. Um, and there, again, there's some areas where he could do better, but there's some areas where he could do worse as well. It goes both ways. Um, but he's done a pretty good job overall uh, when it's come to the roster. Now, uh, at the wide receiver position, y'all know still, uh, we'll see. We'll see. This is a big chance right here, Mr. DaCosta, for you to really go in. But, again, he's had a lot of big chances over the years. And there's been a lot of misses, too. 2020 was a miss. 2021, I think that that was a hit, but then injuries kicked in. Now, 2022, hey, you let's see. Let's see. I was just talking to my uncle the other day, and we, we, we were talking about the Ravens, and we were talking about the roster, and I'm like, I said, hey, they they pretty good, but just the only thing that's missing for me is a wide receiver. He, he said, don't wait up on it because it ain't happening. And I was like, okay. I said, we're going to see. We're going to see. But I just, I, I don't think they're done there yet. Um, But so Eric DaCosta, is he a top 10? Um, I would think so. Uh, I wouldn't put him number one. I wouldn't put him number two. Um... Number three, I, I would really have to sit down and like look at the GMs and look at the teams and whatnot. But Eric DaCosta, he's, he's somewhere up there. I think he would be uh, off the top of my head without like really even thinking about so many other NFL teams. Uh, but I would think that he would definitely be top seven because he's continued uh, to build a not, not necessarily a Super Bowl winner. Obviously not. Um, but a winning team. And that's a lot to do. Um, when, especially if it's a team that's been known for winning, uh, a lot, mostly regular season, I know there's a couple Super Bowls there, but it, it's, it's a, it's a hard act to follow. And for Eric DaCosta, um, still waiting on the playoff success, Super Bowls, of course, but he has continued to, to keep them in the thick of things. Um, and while we do want more from the team, from him, from them, from everybody, um, that is a good start, uh, especially when you follow in the footsteps uh, of Ozzie Newsom. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. Bro, next question came from my guy BB. He said, you would think all these former Ravens players would back Lamar and trash him. Respect is earned and people got to respect him and what he's done for this team and what he will continue doing for charm city why the negative static yes lamar has things to work on and so did the players criticizing and critiquing him all people have things to work on but if it is introduced positively a better result is usually the outcome we appreciate team keep it clean in the louisville 502 hashtag team keep it clean hashtag positive I appreciate that. That's that's a very, very, very good point that you make um, because somebody could have something that they need to work on and presentation can be everything. Now, not saying, oh, Lamar's definitely not a baby. So he ain't got to be like, oh, well, we got to say it nicely to him for him to work on it. No, no, no. Um, but it's there's a big difference. Oh, man, you um, you, you need to work on your, your your back shoulder throws suck. They are terrible. Every time you try to do a back shoulder throw, you end up throwing it to the wrong person. It ends up being put in the worst position possible. You are terrible at back shoulder throws. And that's just a random thing. I ain't even saying Lamar is, but that's just a random thing. That versus, you know what? Let's work more on your back shoulder throws. Um, I think if we work more on those back shoulder throws, we just do a lot of uh, repetition, then that could really just take you to a whole nother level. And, and that would just put you in a different stratosphere almost. And I, I want to really see you implement that more in your game just to have that weapon in your arsenal and, and, and it would be OK. Is it some simple as that? 
and, and that's not even just with football. It, that's just in life and how you present things. So you were spot on. Um, but uh, again, you, you already know, like with a lot of people, they with with their thoughts on Lamar. Some people have had these thoughts before Lamar even touched the NFL football field. Um, some people have developed these thoughts as they watch Lamar uh, be on the NFL football field. Um, and I mean, people are gonna feel how they feel. Everything ain't for everybody, like we always say. Uh, so, and, and yeah, it's people got different ways of presenting things. They got different ways of expressing how they feel about Lamar Jackson, whether right or wrong, whether left or right, whether whatever. They they got their different ways of presenting how they feel about Lamar Jackson. And some people, they present it in a positive way. Some people in a negative way, unfortunately. I know the two Ravens players you're talking about, Shannon Sharp, he usually presents it in a pretty negative way. Uh, and then Bernard Pilot, of course, he presented <laughs> all of it in a negative way uh, from jump. Um Will Lamar be able to change their minds? I I really don't think so. I think the Ravens, Lamar Jackson and the Ravens could go out there and win the Super Bowl this year. And I guarantee you. Shannon Shaw, and all Paula, hey, congrats, Lamar, da 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 da. But I guarantee you they will still find something to complain about when it came to Lamar Jackson and his game. Even if they won the the, the Super Bowl. Uh, because of and not in spite of. And that's what I'm talking about. It, it, they won the Super Bowl because of. And we know a lot of things the Ravens do are because of uh, Lamar Jackson. But they they won the Super Bowl because of him. I guarantee, I guarantee you that they will still find something. Next question came from my guy, Gareth. He said, Dang Raven, how you family doing? Are we doing good? Uh, how would you feel if we went and got Robbie Anderson? I think it would be the best option for our offense. We'd love to hear your opinion on this. Uh, and I can, can I shout out all the team? Keep it clean. Keep being great. Love you, bro. Hey, appreciate this, man. Now, Robbie Anderson. Um, <laughs> I know that had been floating around, especially ever since uh, Baker Mayfield got officially traded there, especially with all the what, what Robbie Anderson had been saying before about Baker Mayfield. Uh, and he just he did say, oh, I was just defending my quarterback. And so, okay, cool, cool, cool. But Robbie Anderson, um, I wouldn't be mad at it. I wouldn't be mad at it. I feel like it would, would give the Ravens a, uh, a legitimate threat at the receiver position, uh, somebody who's a deep threat. Um, I only had a couple of little drops here and there um, But I feel like it will give them a, another threat Opposite Rashad Bateman uh, A serious threat um, I just And I know ever since Lamar Him and Lamar and Willie Sneed They were all working out uh, Down here in South Florida A lot of people were like Oh you old man imagine imagine I just I, I don't think that's gonna happen I don't I know he's not on no crazy contract Um I, I do think that the, the Carolina Panthers would be more than willing to trade him. I don't know. I just don't see Ravens doing it, though. Next two questions came from my guy, Phil. Uh, he said, today, Bernard Pollard was a guest on FS1, Colin Coward's show, explaining the Twitter beef argument he had with Lamar last night, uh, where Colin said he agrees with Pollard that he thinks Lamar's play style is to blame for the postseason record and not Greg Roman's offensive playbook, which I don't agree. But then they said uh, they would still pay him because... <laughs> Because he wins. What's your thoughts? Um, it. I mean, if, if, if they're saying that, uh, they feel like Lamar can't win in the postseason because of how he plays. But then they're saying that they would still pay him. Um, it sounds like they would just be thinking more so uh, from the business point of view, business perspective, and the money that Lamar brings in. To the Baltimore Ravens, continuously having them in the playoffs and obviously having the regular season success uh, to put them in the playoffs and everything that he just does uh, for the team, uh, financial-wise and business-wise. Um, and that's a part that, of course, the Ravens, they certainly would have to think about because that's it's part of the business. It's NFL, it is a business. You always got to remember that. Um, but it's just, to me, it's just a lot deeper than that. Uh Lamar Jackson, you can win with Lamar Jackson. But this is why I just really uh, echo, and I mean, we've been saying that on here for the longest, too, with Ke Keyshawn Johnson. I, w I just wanted to give him a big hug when I saw what he was saying about the Ravens the other day when he talked about 
how the Ravens just have not surrounded Lamar Jackson yet with that significant guy at the wide receiver position. I was just like, man, who you telling? Um, so it's his play style is fine because his play style it adds to it adds to the norm. Like you, you could hand the ball off to your running backs, you could pass the ball, of course, you could do all that stuff. But then you have a quarterback that can do what he can do. Ooh, ooh, it just adds so much more. And it makes you that it should make you that much more um unpredictable. And it should make you that much more explosive. And it's it just can't be Lamar alone though. They just gotta do more. Um and he also said, I follow chat sports on YouTube. When it comes to NFL and NBA, they explain that Seattle drafted a receiver in the draft, uh, where Tyler Lockett is twenty nine years old. Oh, I thought he was older than that. Uh, and is only due three mil this season with the last three years of the contract not guaranteed. Oh, I didn't know that. Do you think a third round offer to Seattle would make sense to have a great number two wide receiver to stretch the field and take coverage off Bateman and Andrews? Mm. So Tyler Lockett. Wow. Wow, he's only due three mil this season and the rest of the contract ain't guaranteed? Oof. Now that, that would be... Of Ravens Alley. I would rather them trade for the other Seattle wide receiver. Uh, but Tyler Lockett, I know my guy Nitro, but he's been talking about Tyler Lockett for the longest. Um, I just, I would rather just a, a bigger guy. Cause I feel like Ravens already got so many short receivers, but he is a veteran. He knows the game. He's been around. He done had all the success and whatnot. Uh, yeah, he could stretch the field. Um, I would, man, I would, I would rather, I would rather DK Metcalf. If they got Tyler Lockett, I wouldn't be too mad. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be mad. I would just be like, oh, okay. I feel like that would push them over the top. Mm. Would, would Tyler Lockett push him over the top? He can catch, and that boy can fly. Um, we done seen him with Russell Wilson, man. When, when, if so, if, once Lamar got that connection with him, that'd be nice. Um, Mm. I, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't, I don't know, man. Next question came from Eva. Shout out to Eva because she sent a, a Louisville flag that we got hanging up there uh, a long time ago. So I appreciate you. She said, hello, team. Keep it clean. It's been a while since I've asked a question. I hope all is well. Okay, okay. On to it. Yes, every, everything is great. But I appreciate you saying most analysts and fans want that flashy wide receiver. I've noticed it around the league as well. You can't win without a top wide receiver. I think a win is a win. Is it possible that Baltimore could win different? Andrews can catch deep and win 50-50s. You have Bateman and Wallace, Gus and J.K. And of course, Baltimore's number one, Lamar Jackson. My question, LOL, finally, can Baltimore only win like the rest of the NFL with a true number one wide receiver? I think something different might work. 2019 didn't go so bad, just saying. Baltimore has some fire weapons when you stop and look at it. Uh, best of luck to Hollywood. Thank you for your time. Uh, wishing love and blessings to you and yours, and L's up. Ooh, appreciate you. So, my question, can Baltimore only win like the rest of the NFL with a true number one wide receiver? I think something different might work. Well, what has something different won them recently? Nothing. Nothing. I mean, they've gotten to the playoffs. They've had regular season success. But playoff time, you, you, you need those guys. You need those guys. And another reason why I, why I advocate so much for the Ravens getting those guys is because, especially because Lamar Jackson is due to get paid. And to me, I, I just feel like the Ravens, they're not 100% sold on him by the way that they construct the roster, uh, by the coaching hires that they make. Um, it just feels like they're not 100% sold on him. Uh, in my opinion. So what better way to 100% be able to convince yourself that somebody is or is not that guy? Put them in position where there are absolutely no excuses whatsoever. Give them the best. Put them in the best position to succeed. And he's already succeeded without them putting him in the best position to succeed. 
So just imagine how much his game and the Ravens game and their success could be elevated if they elevated that roster. Next question came from my guy, Jaden B. He said, I ain't graven first time asking a question, but I've been following you for a while now. Uh, thanks so much for the constant great content and updates. Hey, I appreciate it. I just had a quick question about a potential vet wide receiver signing that I haven't seen discussed much. How would you feel about signing Odell Beckham Jr.? I'm aware he has a situation with his ACL and likely wouldn't play till the later part of the season, but hear me out. That makes him the perfect compromise between both sides of the wide receiver argument. Him being out for a while would allow our younger guys time to develop and grow, and at the same time add a strong weapon for Lamar during the later part of the season and or playoffs, where he did really well last year. Thanks for your time and sending the best wishes to you and yours, Jaden. That's a good question, and I, I've, I've seen that uh, discussed a little bit before, um, because it, it does present an, an interesting uh, situation, what would be an interesting situation. Because it's like, man, do uh, would the Ravens sign uh, Odell Beckham Jr. and he wouldn't even be ready at the beginning of the year? But then, yeah, you let the young guys shine. You see what they about. Uh, watch them grow. And then, boom, later on in the season, closer to playoff time, as long as you make the playoffs. Uh, well, closer to playoff time, it's like, oh, oh, we got Odell sitting in the chamber just waiting. Oh, nice. But then you would have to hope that you have a healthy Odell Beckham Jr. You would have to hope that Odell Beckham Jr. stays healthy. Uh, I, I just I would be worried if they relied on Odell Beckham Jr. and Odell Beckham Jr. alone to add to their wide receiver room. Yeah, he'd be a nice bonus, but then he had to stay healthy. He hasn't been staying healthy recently. He's, when he's on the field, he makes an impact, but he just hasn't been staying healthy uh, all the way. So. Do you go into the season? All right, we signed up Dale Beckham Jr. All right, we straight. We'll let the young boys eat. What happens if one of the young boys gets hurt? What happens if they miss time? Then what? Who do you turn to? Who do you rely on? But even without that, you, you do you go in there? Hey, all right, Odell Beckham Jr. Let let's 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 roll with him. We know he can't play till later on. All right, cool. We'll see how it goes. But then Odell Beckham Jr. comes through. Maybe he doesn't come through. Who knows how he'll respond to the rehab and the surgery and all that. So far, so good. And we hope that he stays 100% healthy, not even for just this year, but for out, throughout his entire career. But I feel like that's just, there's just so much unknown with that. If, if they sign Odell Beckham Jr., cool. But Odell Beckham Jr. could not be the end-all, be-all. Next question came from my boy Aaron. He said, Engraven, I hope all is well with you and the family. With the Chiefs getting set to release wide receiver Josh Gordon, do you think we should make a move on him? I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm all for DK Metcalf or Debo Samuels. But in your opinion, does a Josh Gordon bring the same value a DK Metcalf does? Shout out to team. Keep it clean. And I wish nothing but the best for each and every one of you. Hey, appreciate that, man. Thank you. Um, Josh Gordon, wow, man. Josh Gordon, he was like that before. I'm not sure how he is now. I know, like you mentioned, he was with the Chiefs. Didn't really hear much. But, you know, Chiefs are one of them teams, man. Because they did it with Le'Veon Bell. They did it with Josh Gordon. Uh, they did it with, uh, with Shady McCoy. Um, who else did they do it with? I forgot who else. But they're, they're one of them teams that they like, hey, look. You may not be in your prime, but if if you still got something, we're going to find out. We're going to take a chance on you. Uh, they do that with a lot of uh, guys that are free agents that may have had a little history um, and just whatever. But anyway, uh, I, I just don't know. It, it certainly couldn't hurt. It certainly couldn't hurt to give him a shot uh, just to see. Because um, if they could if they could reach in. Especially with T. Martin and Keith Williams. And with him being able to play with Lamar. But if they could reach in and, and pull out that Josh Gordon potential um, that we've seen before in the past, like way in the past, not recently. But if they could go there and get it, then it could be something nice, man. It could be something serious. But um, his head would just have to be in the game. I know he had a lot of like stuff that he had dealt with over the years that had been going on with his family and stuff, which is tough, man. It's tough. Um, it, but it would just all depend on which Josh Gordon 
they were getting. And the last question on this episode also came from my guy BB. He said, what's up, fam? Have there been any updates on Gus? If the Ravens are to be A1 with this running game, Gus needs to be involved. I know Ravens have picked up some artillery this offseason, but JK and Gus are vital to this run game. Thanks again, fam. And like Deshaun Watson should be when it comes to playing this season, I'm out. Hello, uh, Yeah, with things been pretty quiet with uh, Gus Edwards. Um, we've seen him put little videos here and there. Not many, though. Uh, you know, Gus ain't really a big talker like that on social media or nothing, man. Um, so, I mean, with training camp is literally around the corner. So that should answer a lot of our questions uh, come that time. Uh, but, yeah, it's been pretty quiet. I haven't heard really anything about it at all. So I guess we just got to wait and see. Ain't no chance, but I'm